Hi, Catherine here. I'm going to show you how to hand print a Pronto plate or polyester plate lithograph by hand at home. Tools for printing Pronto plate lithography at home include your Pronto plate with your drawing on it. This one here has a lithographic crayon and ballpoint pen. You will need an inking roller you will need your printmaking ink. An oil-based ink is recommended and preferably some kind of lithography ink is preferred for its um, flatness. If all you have is etching ink, I would recommend adding a little bit of linseed oil to it to help it um, disperse a little bit flatter. You will also need a household sponge, preferably one that doesn't have the scrubby side, but if that's all you have, Make sure to only have the sponge side, not the scrubby side, touch your plate. If you have gum arabic, use that. If not, that's okay. You'll need one to two bowls of water. And you'll need your paper that you want to print on. And some tools to burnish your prints with. I have three tools over there that I'll show. A wooden spoon. A can of corn or a canned good of some kind, and a Japanese baron. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to ink up and print a Pronto plate lithograph. Uh, as you can see, I have everything set up and ready to go. So I, have, I am using an etching ink that I've modified with a little bit of linseed oil, and that will help this spread out a little bit thinner. Now, these polyester plates were designed for commercial offset lithography. And so, when thinking about how you're going to ink your plates, keep in mind that these were designed to save money, to like um, kind of make sure that you're using as little ink as possible. Um, otherwise, the more ink you use, the more likely it might grab the surface of this and lift your drawing material off at a faster rate. So I'm just putting down one, um, one bead of ink across my slab about the width of my roller. And I'm using a roller with a relatively harder durometer and a new roller, so it shouldn't be anything. Just a hair more. Probably have two of these this one. This is a new roller I'm trying out. Um, it's a German roller of some kind. So it seemed to be thinking up in the center though, so I'm wondering if I bought a damaged roller. any little bits of dried ink or anything that's gotten caught in your ink, be sure to get rid of that using the tip of your inking knife. I'm going to see if I can use another brayer. Okay, so I switched brayers really quickly um, just because usually if there's like a low spot in your brayer, that's going to lead to like an uneven inking of your already really flat plate. So I switched to another roller that looks pretty good. And make sure the ink that you have out is nice and even, flat, and ready to go. All right. So this is the time, if you have a little bit of gum arabic, you can add that to the water. Um, some people also say to add a little bit of citric acid, but I have found that if you add too much citric acid, sometimes that will actually start to like eat away your, your plate faster than without it. 
Um, so I just add a little bit, not too much. And sometimes I'll even like pre-coat my plate in gum arabic. Unlike regular lithography, there is no um, etching. We're just printing straight as is. So in order to make it a little easier to ink up, you want to kind of make sure that this plate isn't going to be sliding around. So usually I add a little bit or just enough water under the plate that it kind of suctions down on a nice flat smooth surface. If you do not have a glass palette, I recommend taping down a sheet of tin foil or a sheet of freezer paper, parchment paper, or wax paper, something that is a relatively non-porous surface. All right, so the next most important thing is you wanna coat the entire plate in a, just a thin layer of water all over. The area you're going to print in. If we were to just start inking this up, it would stick to everywhere that is dry. The whole premise of lithography is that oil and water do not mix. And so by uh, putting down the water, it's actually forced when we start to ink up, it'll kind of force the ink to not sit there. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start from like the top right. And I purposely made sure that my image did not go all the way to the edge of the plate. So I'm going to ink it up a couple times. With usual lithography, oftentimes you have it takes several like four to five different prints for your whole image to ink up all the way. I find with pronto plate lithography, it often will like come to um, the color or to the weight of the color you want within a first or second pass. All right, so it's really starting to ink up pretty nicely. Um, you might notice that around the edges, there's some accumulation of like little like chunks of black that's usually some of the ink coming off you just want to make sure that you wipe that off before you print because sometimes if you this um, plate is still receptive to marks even after you start printing so you can technically go back in and keep drawing on the plate to add more marks as you go all right so i'm going to remove my gloves and the next bit, I would say you can either print with your plate facing down, like just like this, and printing by hand directly on it with a plate. Um, for this, I'm going to see what happens if I actually print with the plate on top. One of the great things about the Pronto plates is that it is clear, so you can see right through it. So I'm going to hover this over my sheet of paper and kind of see where I'd like it to go. I think about there. It's a little close to that edge. Now because the Pronto plate is smooth in itself, I can go ahead and start burnishing. If you decided to do it the other way with the paper on top, if your paper is starting to pill as you burnish. Um, I would suggest grabbing a sheet of freezer paper, wax paper, silicone paper of some kind to reduce the friction. So I'm going to start off. I have, you can use either of these, whatever you have at hand at home. Oops. Your first print is likely going to be very light. 
Um, one thing I've also started using for hand burnishing at home is actually like a can of um, like any kind of canned goods. Oops. Any kind of canned good. And I feel like this is a little more ergonomic than a spoon. Sometimes the direction and way you burnish something will show up as you print. I just realized that this must have shifted at some point because I see that it's not quite aligned underneath. Okay, let me keep going. I'm just gonna keep printing anyway and see what happens, even though it looks like I might have moved the paper since I started printing. Now with most Pronto plates, your first print is going to be very light. Sometimes it will take a little while to uh, build up to a fuller, more rich uh, strength of color. So let's just see what this first one looks like. Alright, so it's a little bit thin, but I expected this. Not only are you printing this by hand, but it's also like the very first one. So let's see what happens if I print this a second time. Let's print this a second time. So I'm going to add just a touch of water underneath, make sure that sits in place. You also want to be very careful about how much water you have anyway, um, just because you don't want to risk getting water into your batch of ink. Because once that happens, you might start to see little droplets or spots in here, and sometimes you have to completely pick everything up and re-put your ink down again. All right, so always make sure to completely sponge your image before you ink your plate. Everybody at some point who does lithography has mistakenly um, rolled up their ink um, or rolled up their plate dry. <laughs> so maybe I'll show you what happens and what you can do just in case. I have this second bucket of water here to kind of wring out dirty water since that will sometimes help you reduce the amount of scumming if you use clean water. All right, this time I'm gonna do like what's called three passes of ink over the whole surface. try printing with the paper on top and see what that happens that way. I am using dry paper which might be another factor as to why I'm not getting as rich a print. Um, so by printing by hand it might be helpful to make a damp pack if you're doing a single color. If you're going to be doing multiple color layers I recommend printing dry so that the paper doesn't expand and shrink and mess up your registration. Although I would say if you want to do something like that, design your image in such a way where maybe it doesn't require such precise registration. Okay, so I know that I'm using a Kozo paper that's usually used for calligraphy. Um, so I know I'm in my experience it pills up if I start to burnish it. So I'm putting a piece of freezer paper down first. Ideally, if you have a press, use a press, uh, preferably a lithography press, but these can also be printed using an etching press. Um, I often use um, the Pronto plate with the paper I'm printing on 
a sheet of newspaper, and then a layer of plexiglass uh, that's often used for monotyping and run that through the press without any kind of blankets. You don't want the pressure to be very high, just enough for it to feed through the press and enough for it to pick up a full rich image. But it uh, puts on a different kind of pressure uh, than a lithography press does, which applies very even, flat, consistent, smooth pressure over this. If you want to test to see how it looks, you can kind of lift up a corner. So, okay, it's very light. I imagine if this was on a regular press, this would look a little bit better. Okay. I wasn't being careful, so I think the, the paper slipped a little bit. Okay, so let me take a look. Okay, so I did mess up a little bit. I kind of crinkled the paper when I lifted up my freezer paper. But as you can see, um, compare the first one to the second one, and it's gradually starting to fill in a little bit. You see more details within um, the trees and within, there's a little bit more definition in the house and here. So I might print one more just to see what that looks like. So again, always, oops, a little bit of water under here. There's a fine line. If there's too much, then it'll keep slipping and sliding. And remember, moisten this with your sponge. If your image does go all the way out to the edge by any chance, um, or really, really close to it, the edges do have a tendency to pick up ink really easily. So just be forewarned as you print, you'll probably see whatever edge of the plate you have. Um, because I'm going to be like hand printing this, I'm going to ink it more than I usually do. So I might do about five passes. So yeah, just always think thin. You don't need a ton of water, it just needs to be slightly damp and misty um, and as thin a layer of ink as possible. Okay, let me give this another try. I'm going to try it on regular printer paper because I'm curious. <laughs> so let me see what that looks like because it's a nice flat surface and for some of the printing at home, maybe pages from a printer might be all you have. Uh, this doesn't have the usual like sizing and things, but then, hey, it might work. You can also see I switched to wax paper. It's going much nicer. Look, I used a combination of the Japanese Baron and a wooden spoon this time around. Ooh. And this is just on printer paper. Nice. Now, because it is just cheap printer paper, I had some moisture at the bottom, um, so it did start to wrinkle at the edge. 
I'm not sure how this would do if you try to flatten this, but I would put it under a little bit of weight under some books once the ink has dried, and that should help a little bit. Wow, that's exciting. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time, see if I can print this on the, the Kozo. Again, always ink that up, or always moisten the print. Um, after a few prints, if it starts to seem to get lighter, sometimes I'll add a little bit of more ink to my slab. You might be able to see that I'm starting to get what's called scumming. If that stays there and like doesn't move with the addition of some extra water. Um, I have tried and read that you can use a little bit of toothpaste and a toothbrush to kind of uh, clean up that area. You'd want to blot the extra ink up first and then do that. Otherwise, you'll just smear whatever little bit of ink is there. But I have also found that sometimes that actually creates more problems. Um, scratches in the plate will start to pick up the ink differently than other areas. So um, it's hit or miss. Some people use that and it works just fine. Other people, it seems to like ruin their image. So that is just something to try out if you are ever desperate. This time I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to mist my paper a little bit uh, to moisten it, and sometimes it makes it a little bit more receptive um, to the ink of the paper. I'm just going to spray the back of it, and I'm keeping the mister at a, a, a long enough distance so it's not super heavy in case it's, it spritzes. If you want to, you can spritz both sides, just see what happens. I know this isn't the most even misting. Uh, what I will do is I might just use like a roll of paper towel and gently pick up any excess moisture. And then I will apply this rather than using my inky gloves. You might have a couple of scrap pieces of paper nearby. If you don't want to touch your paper in right now. There we go, and kind of gently hover that over to where you would like it. And I'll try printing that. What I like about Kozo is you can kind of I think especially if it's slightly dampened, you can kind of see through it to see kind of where you transferred the drawing. Yeah, because this time you can kind of see some of the marks that this is making. to see if there's anywhere that looks light. for printing a lithograph without a press. 
Um, I will say I have some areas of this that I'm starting to lose with Pronto plates. That is very common. A lot of times they start to fade after or start to wear away in certain areas after 10 to 15 prints or so. Also, if you're using a, a lithographic crayon that is above five, I actually had a number seven, which is a lot harder. It has a lot less grease content. And I have a feeling that some of those that I used in like the sky started to fade away a little bit. And of course, it's not quite nearly as dark as what it appears on here. If I had a press, I think I would get a much better result. But I think I'm pretty happy with um, what I'm getting with just by hand using a wooden spoon or even a regular metal spoon at home. Thank you.